My name is Bruce Mertz and the people around here call me Mr. Christmas. This is my 31st year of putting up the lights. And I've been living here since 1977. And uh, every year I start uh, setting them up at the end of August. It takes me about three months. Oh, I just go from one thing to another thing because I know if I just do one thing a day, I'm going to get it done. <laughs> Most of the commercial lights fade out over time, so I've developed my own uh, paint that does not fade. The, the lights that I've used it on have lasted something like 12, 13 years without ever fading. I gotta heat up the insulation so it's pliable. You know, right now it's kind of stiff. I started with a string of lights around the house. My neighbor across the street told me that when I moved in here, he's gotta add something new every year, you know? That's, the, that's the, what we do around here. So over the years, I've added something every year and he hasn't added anything. He still got the same string of old C9 bulbs from 40 years ago. And while well, he sits in the house and looks through his picture window at this beautiful light display up across the street. So he knows how to work things. <laughs> you want me to brush you down? Oh, heck. You want to get, see this girl do a trick? Sure. I'll show you a trick. Maybe she won't do it anymore, but let me see. Okay. There we are. Is That's that... her trick. Right, Trixie? Oh. I first met Bruce at the uh, AJ's Born Grill. I used to play liar's dice down there, and, and the guy liked to play liar's dice, so I met him while I was playing liar's dice. Well, sitting next to Mr. Christmas is a good spot. I get lots of hugs. That, buddy. The first night I turn them on is on uh, Thanksgiving night. That's a happy holiday. Christmas is a happy holiday. New Year's Eve is a happy holiday. So I go on to the 2nd of January. Here we go. When I start the lights at night, I have a, a CD with the National Anthem, I mean, the God Bless America. So at uh, 2 minutes and 10 seconds before 6 o'clock, I put on the music. And then as the applause dies down, and, uh, I got all my timers. I got 14 timers. They're all supposed to come out at the same time. And then I go in and I have a, a CD with uh, uh, all banjos playing Christmas tunes. And that's the start of the evening. So I go out about every 15, 20 minutes, greet them in the, for the evening. I'll hand out photographs to them. Every season now for the last four or five years, I've gone through about 4,000 photos. Well, they usually ask about three questions that I put the answers to on a little label and put on the back of the photograph. One is, uh, how many lights do you have? And I said, 51,000. How long does it take you to put them up? And I said, three months. And uh, what's your pg and &E bill? And about uh, $700. Actually, I told you I had a lot of fun watching the people on the red carpet, especially the kids. Yeah. They, they either chasing, chasing the lights back and forth on the red carpet, or else they're rolling down the hill. <laughs> it's, 
It's hilarious. <laughs> said, can I come inside? I said, there's nothing inside. I mean, there's nothing. It's just, you know, my cat. That's all there. My, this is my cat. Hi, Trixie. <laughs> oh, Fred is here. Hello there. When do you turn your lights off? Oh, 10 o'clock. Oh, oh my gosh, 10 o'clock. I, I didn't turn them off. I have 14 channels. Oh my gosh. No, I love your house. Your house is amazing. I saw it last night and I wanted to turn it off and just look at everything. It was so cool. All right, well, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Yeah, come Merry back Christmas. Again when I'm going to look out the arm. All right. Okay. Then yeah, we'll get it on with you. <laughs> You didn't say that, did you? I didn't say that. Did I say that? <laughs> His neighbors call him Mr. Christmas, and every night at 6 p.m. sharp, he flips Mr. a switch. Christmas. His mind is, is so active, it is impossible for him to, to stop working. People would ask me, where, where, where do you buy all this stuff? I said, yeah, you can't buy it. I said, I built it all myself. I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This is a Sequencer I bought for two dollars at a in uh, 1978. These relays here are mounted on two fry pans that I bought from Kmart, and I'm using them for a heat sink. So there's 20 micro switches on here. Each one of these little plastic plugs intercepts the switch. I've got a program so that the lights chase around the house in groups of, in blocks of eight. got into lights until I just moved here. I grew up uh, out in South Dakota. I was the youngest of 10. We didn't have electricity then on a farm, and I'd never seen any electric lights or anything like that. We were not necessarily that rich, you know, and so presents were kind of few and far between there during Christmas. I have a joke about South Dakota. Uh, South Dakota is the Ever Never Land. If you ever leave, you never go back. <laughs> and I finally left to join the Air Force. The first time I ever rode on a, a train, first time I ever rode on a bus, went to Fort Warren, Wyoming for electrician school, but uh, that was my first experience with lights, colored lights. If someone come along and took their hand like that and <laughs> dragged all the wires out of the way, I wouldn't know what to do because I have no circuit design here. It's all done in my head. There's add-ons and jury rigged and by large, if I keep my hands off it, everything's okay. <laughs> Nellie was very interested in Christmas. She loved Christmas. She used to go to a, a, a church and uh, tell Christmas stories. She was so good at it, but she had the kids in tears, you know, <laughs> the way she described everything, you know. But anyway, uh, uh, we lacked one week of being married 10 years. It was a childhood cancer that she had acquired, it was a, but, but it was for an adult. She. Uh, well, she died about 18 months after she got, it, got the disease. And then uh, I continued to go to work, and I retired from, the, retired from civil service in 94. And I realized I had a life to live, and I, uh, what am I going to do? And I said, well, the best thing I can do is just uh, do lights, you know, just keep on doing lights, you know. And that way it kept me busy, but also allowed me to be able to entertain people and have them be, be, become uh, happy with it, you know which in turn made me happy.
we had a very up and down emotional day last last Monday. I was sitting in the garage here and my friend Randy was sitting right over here next to me. And I'm looking out the the door across the street and I could see the uh, the garbage truck coming around the corner, a big garbage truck. And it was going about 45 mile an hour, way fast. The speed limit was 25. This big flash of brown went up in the air like that and, and killed a cat. I said, Randy, go see that. That's Trixie. Can't, I can't face it, you know. And I came back to the garage and I said to Bruce, I'm sorry. So I went over there and picked up Trixie and I brought her back and put her in the backyard. We took turns digging a hole, cut a sheet and put Trixie in it. We both had tears in our eyes doing this, so we lowered it in the hole and put the sheet over the top of it. So I went back out here in the garage and sat down, and tears still streaming down my face, and Randy was in here, his tears were streaming down too. And all of a sudden, I look over, and Trixie walks in. He said, well, look, look, there's Trixie. I looked around, I said, oh my God, there's Trixie. I thought I was seeing a ghost. And he's, oh, wow, and he just hollered out loud, and when all that noise came, she just took off, right? We couldn't find her again. I thought, that was unbelievable. I don't believe that happened. And Randy said, I'll go look for her. I said, she, that's just an apparition. You didn't, you didn't see it. So then he finally found her and <laughs> come back out here. And then I got to thinking, oh, my neighbor's cat is, looks just like Trixie. But when I went out to pick up Trixie, I didn't have any thoughts that it would be somebody else's cat, you know. And I said, Frank, I said, why don't you sit down here? And I told him, I said, you know, I think that your cat is buried out in the backyard here. He says, I don't know how I'm going to tell my wife. I said, well, good luck. I says, I'm sorry. But I'll tell you one thing, you won't have to do too much grieving because we did all the grieving for you. <laughs> Santa. Hi. Right. See you next year. Hope you don't wear out your arm waving at people. There it goes. There it goes. Don't do it. <laughs> Stay on. So, you got to go in and turn the rest of the stuff off. Well, yeah, leave it on for a little bit. Huh? Leave it on. Oh, okay, if you like. Yeah, how are you? After the lights go off, and it's rather dismal, you know, I mean, I'm, golly sake, where did all the fun go, you know what I mean? And once I get back into the, the, the idea that I gotta take this stuff down, well then, it's, it's just a normal part of the cycle of Christmas, New Year's, Easter, July, summer, 